In real life, things are seldom perfect. For example, if you were to stack up a group of blocks on top of each other, then chances are they would not be aligned perfectly. But if you were to use a blender to stack up some blocks using, say, the array modifier, then they would be aligned perfectly. And this is something that can make computer-generated images lack realism. To add realism, you need to add imperfections. For these blocks, you could manually make small changes to the position and rotation of each one, but this can take a lot of time, especially if you have a lot of objects like you see here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to automate this process by using Python, and in so doing, you'll be adding a lot more realism to your Blender scenes. And what's nice is that Blender has a built-in text editor for Python. Also, once you get a taste of what Python can do, you may be inspired to learn how to use it to do a lot more. In this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.82a. Before we jump into the Python script, I'll use the array modifier to create a bunch of cubes and show you how to prepare them to get the outcome that we want. So with the cube selected, switch to the modifier tab and add an array modifier. Set the count to 8 and space them out on the x-axis by changing the x value to 1.5. Now add another array modifier to stack them on top of each other. Set the count to 5 and then change the x value to 0 and the z value to 1. We need these cubes to be separate objects, so apply the two array modifiers. Then tab into edit mode and press A to select all. To separate them into individual objects, press P and select by loose parts. Now tab back into object mode. Now we can select the cubes one at a time. The Python script that we'll be developing is going to be able to rotate the cubes, so we need to set the origin of all of the cubes to the center of their own individual geometry. Currently, they're all set to the same origin as the first cube that we added. For example, if I select this cube and rotate it on the z-axis, you'll see that it's rotating around this point instead of its own center. So to fix this, select all of the cubes. Then right-click one of the cubes and select Set Origin and then Origin to Geometry. Now if I select this cube and rotate it, it rotates around its own center. Now we're ready to write the Python script, so switch to the scripting workspace. To start a new Python script, click the New button. You'll see a cursor appear so that we can start typing. The first thing to type is Import BPY. All of our Blender Python scripts need to start with this because it gives us access to Blender functions, data, and classes. The next thing I'm going to add is a comment. Comments start with a pound sign and are followed by the comment itself. As far as Blender and Python are concerned, the comment doesn't do anything, it's ignored. A comment is just a way for people to make notes to help them remember what's happening in the script and also to help others understand what the script is doing. We're going to be looping through all of the cubes one at a time and that's what this comment is about. The next line in the Python script will control the looping. With a loop, we can execute a bunch of statements one at a time and when it reaches the end, it will jump back up to the top and repeat it again. In our case, each time the loop repeats, one of the cubes will be moved and rotated. We have 40 cubes, so the loop will repeat 40 times. We're going to use a for statement for the loop. This lets us iterate through a list or sequence of things one at a time. In this case, we're going to iterate through all of the selected objects. That way, all we need to do is select the objects that we want to move and rotate, and then run the script. So this statement will let us iterate through all of our selected cubes one at a time. This is a variable. A variable is a holder for something. In this case, it will hold a value that represents one of the cubes. The name of the variable is something that we decide. I chose to name it obj, which is just short for object. This part of the statement holds the list, or sequence of the selected objects, which will be all of our selected cubes. Each time the loop repeats, a reference to one of the selected objects is put into this variable. At the end of this statement, notice that there's a colon. 
This is important because it signals the start of all of the statements that will be executed inside our loop. This is the first statement that will be inside our loop. Notice that it's indented. This is not to make it look nice, it's required. All of the statements that you want to be included inside the loop must be indented. This starts with obj, which is the name of the variable from here. Each time the loop repeats, this will represent a different one of the selected objects. And it doesn't matter which one of the objects this represents at any point in time, because this loop will repeat until all of the objects get their turn. So this holds the location of an object on the x-axis. The plus sign followed by an equal sign means that this value will be increased by this value. We're basically just adding an offset to the current location. The distance that the object will move will be a random value. We can generate a random floating point number by using the random uniform function. We specify a range of numbers by giving it a min and max value, and it will return a random number in that range. Our min and max numbers are separated with a comma. To be able to use the random uniform function, we need to add import random up here. So to summarize, this whole statement will move an object on the x-axis by a random distance within this range of values. Now I'll add similar statements for the y and z axes. For the cubes in this project, I don't want to move them on the z-axis, so I set the min and max value to zero. The reason that I'm even including this statement for the z-axis is because I want to be able to use this Python script in other Blender projects where I may want to move objects on the z-axis. Now I'm going to add a comment so that I can see at a glance what these three statements do. Here are the statements that we're going to use to rotate the objects. They're similar to the ones that we use to move the objects, but with a couple of differences. You'll notice here that instead of setting the location, we're setting the rotation. We're using the random uniform function again, but this time we're also using the math radians function. That's because this rotation value is in radians and I want to use degrees. So the math radians function converts degrees to radians. So this generates a random number with min and max values in degrees. Then it's converted to radians and the rotation is increased by this value. To be able to use the math radians function, we need to add import math up here. For this project, I only want to rotate the cubes on the z-axis, and so I set the min and max values to zero for the x and y axes. Our Python script is done now. All of these statements will be executed one at a time, then the script will loop back up to the top and the statements will be executed again. The loop will repeat for each of the objects that are selected. We're ready to try it out, but I'm going to save the project first. To use the script, switch to the Layout workspace and select all of the cubes. I don't want the plane selected, so I'll deselect it. Then switch to the Scripting workspace and click the Run Script button. To see what this looks like, switch back to the Layout workspace and deselect all. Here is the rendered image using cycles with 512 samples. You can see that the cubes are no longer positioned perfectly and it looks much more realistic. If you don't like how much the cubes were moved and rotated, then just press Ctrl Z to undo it. Then change the min and max values and run the script again. I'll switch back to the scripting workspace now. When you run your script, if you get an error message, it will typically tell you check the message in the system console. To view the system console from the window menu, select Toggle System Console. This window will give you more information about the error. To hide the system console, again from the window menu, select Toggle System Console. When you save your Blender project, the script will be saved with it. You can also save just your Python script to use with future Blender projects. To do that, from the text menu, select Save As. Python scripts typically end with a PY extension. To load a Python script, from the text menu, select Open. Now let's use the script to move and rotate the cubes in this scene. So I'll select the cubes. Then I'll switch to the scripting workspace. 
This is the same script that we just used, except that I changed the min and max values and I'm also moving and rotating on all three axes. Now I'll click the Run Script button. This is the rendered image. This looks much more realistic now that the cubes are no longer positioned perfectly. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.